Okay, well, welcome to another video. This is um, the YC88, as I'm sure you remember from the last one. And this is just a killer combination of sounds and ease of use. Um, I think it is probably one of the better options that's out there when it comes to just the whole package as far as the keyboard goes. So you've got, you've got your organ engine over here, you've got your keys A and B, effects, speaker amp, reverb, and finally master EQ over here. And I apologize, my uh, K and M Omega second stacker here is kind of in the way, but I'll try to make this as clear and easy to understand as possible as we go. But the point of this particular video is to show you the individual single sounds, what what Yamaha, I almost said Roland, what Yamaha calls voices. Okay, so I'm using a condenser mic above the setup here. It's a Rode NT1, not the NT1A, NT1. And uh, you'll likely hear other sounds that are going on in my household, dogs, possibly somebody in the shower, uh, baby crying, maybe. <laughs> so sorry about that in advance, but this is just... You know, this is life. This is the real sounds of life. So hopefully it won't be too distracting for you. But this is the YC88. Fantastic keyboard. And we're going to go through each individual sound. Okay, we're not talking about live sets. Live sets is like a snapshot of everything that's going on on the surface of the keyboard at one time. This is individual sounds. Okay, so we're talking about single voices. So, you've got three sections. Two of them are identical. Okay, I'll explain what I mean by that. First section, which of course grabs your eye right away when you, you turn this keyboard on, is the organ section. And it's labeled organ. You have lower and upper, <clears throat> volume, pre-drive, split, lower and upper, octave, course the draw bars vibrato chorus percussion which has second third slow fast normal soft on and off just like a real organ over here there's a rotary speaker section which has stop slow and fast I'm describing this in some detail because I know it's sometimes hard to see these things in the videos and a lot of people have said we really want to see your hands so instead of doing an overhead shot Again, I'm really limited in what I'm able to do in this room, um, but basically I've got an iPhone here picking up this angle. And so I'll walk you through it. I'll talk you through what I'm looking at here. So sitting in front of the keyboard, you've got Yamaha logo over there to your left, the pitch and modulation sticks, master volume, the organ section I just described, and there's one knob, which may be hard to see here, um, volume and pre-drive are right under this, but right here we have the organ selection knob. So we've got several models of organs to choose from. We've got H1, which of course is Hammond 1. We have H2, Hammond 2. H3, Hammond 3. F1, which is an FM organ. And that's not a model, that's actually synthesized real FM um, happening here in the keyboard. Um, FM2, FM3, FM4, FM5, and finally FM6. And each of those sound very different from one another, especially the FM organs. So we'll go back to the first one. And I'll demonstrate each area for you. But first, let's move on to the next part of the keyboard, which is this live set section. You got a knob here for navigation which you can use to change sounds. And when you get to the one you like, you just hit enter. Exit button's right under that. You've got page um, increment and detriment here. So you can go forward or backward. Store, panel lock, tune, split point, transpose, touch, settings, and menu. And then live sets, buttons one through eight. So each live set can have up to three sounds in it. But within each page, you have eight live sets. So, for example, if we're on page 16, 
you can have 16 1 16 2 16 3 so on and so forth moving on to the next section we have keys a and b and this is a little different than the cp series okay we have keys a and b and these two sections are identical in the sense that you could do two exact same sounds so if you wanted to do some um, salsa like piano stuff you could put uh, say a c7 piano in there and you could have one going octave down and another going octave up and you you have that kind of octave piano sound so you got keys a and keys b within keys a and b you can choose from four categories piano electric piano synth and then kind of a catch-all which is called others we have left and right to split or cover the entire keyboard we have the on and off. I forgot to tell you that too on the organ section. You have the on and off switch, so you can enable that section or off, or turn it off. Same thing for A and B, so you can individually trigger them. So if I've got O, A, and B, O being organ, A, keys A, B is keys B, turned on, if all those are on, then I have O, A, and B showing a sound here in my uh, display. We've got octave. Negative two, negative one, plus one, plus two. Volume knob for each section there. Tone, which is sort of like a sweep EQ. You've got envelope generator and filter as an option here within keys A and B. And then we have three effect sections. Within each, you can control the depth of the effect, the rate of the effect, and turn each effect on individually or turn it off. We have yet a separate effect, so if you wanted to have two effects um, and then have an, a third one on top of that, but this is interesting because this is, it's either organ, keys A or keys B. It's an individual effect that isn't universal, so you can, you can have an effect for A, B, or organ in this section. And depth and rate is also there. Within that section, because we can do delay we have tap so you can change your tap tempo there um, over here we've got speaker and amp and I realize this may be hard to see because of this this stacker again is probably in the way speaker slash amp for organ a organ B I'm sorry organ or key a or key B and within that you have drive and tone but one of the options within the speaker slash amp section is rotary A, rotary B. So you can have two different ones that you can choose from. And I'll show you how to choose what goes in that slot in a moment. But you also have amp models. So if I turn this on, we have lead, which is UK lead, UK crunch, US double, and US case. So I'll let you figure out what those refer to, what those are modeling. Then we have a separate reverb section, which I really appreciate. And this can be either universal for the entire thing. You can have everything set the same. Organ, key A and key B. You can turn that on and off. Or individually, you can adjust organ, adjust key A and adjust key B. And finally, you have a master universal EQ, which, let me get over here, away from the mic a little bit. You have low, mid with a frequency sweep and high, okay? <clears throat> this is a cardioid condenser, so you, you might hear my voice kind of change around the room a bit as I move my head. But hopefully this is a better solution than just talking into the iPhone. So we'll turn off the EQ. That's not something I use very much, but can come in handy. All right, so that's kind of an overview of the keyboard, physically. For the action in this particular case, you have the Natural Wood Graded Hammer 3 Triple Sensor Action. It's a mouthful. But, oops, let me, uh, <laughs> let me turn off all the sections here and just push down. I don't know if you can see it very well in the video, but there are wooden keys with a ivory and ebony-like surface. And uh, they're triple sensor, so you don't have to release the key all the way in order to trigger the sound again when you play. So, for example... You can see that I'm not bringing that key all the way up as if this kind of thing. It's, it's able to do that. And you can also... 
So very, very sensitive and fast responding action. Really nice. It is graded, so down here it's heavier and it gets lighter as we go up. So there's some weight mechanisms in there doing that. Around the back we have several, um, I think it's damper or, sorry, Yamaha calls it sustain. More properly, it's Korg that says damper. You have sustain, you have um, assignable. I think you have foot switch one and two. And then there are others. You also have stereo inputs. Um, you have four sets of outputs. So you've got XLR left and right, which are balanced, and you've got unbalanced quarter inch um, left and right. Then you've also got uh, headphone out. And then there's two USB sections, and of course the power, and I won't go over all that. So enough of that, let's dive into the sounds, okay? So I've done the live set video where I showed you the particular live sets. But this is a demo of the individual pieces of live sets. So what makes up a live set? So we're gonna start over here. We're in an initial sound, so there's no nothing going on as far as effects and all that. In fact, I'll literally turn off all the sections except for Hammond 1. So we've got Hammond 1 turned on. I've got three draw bars out. Let's just pull four out. I'm gonna go into settings, controllers, foot controller one, assign, and that is set to expression, which is what I want. So I'm able to do that. And I've got the FC7 pedal plugged into foot controller one. All right, I'm gonna go into, uh, let's see, sound, organ settings, expression type, and make sure that's set to drive and volume. So I want it doing more than just adjusting the volume. I want it to actually adjust the drive just like you would on a real organ. So on a B3 or C3 like I have over here, you can't see that, it's out of the shot, but there's a 1958 C3 sitting over here. When you pump the volume pedal, it actually brings the grit into the sound. So it overdrives the amp in the organ itself and by extension um, overdrives the Leslie as well, especially if it's really feeding it. So to that end, we have a section here called pre-drive. Now what that is, is it's the preamp drive of the organ itself before it hits the Leslie speaker. You'll notice there are, is no Leslie on that sound, right? So volume is turned up all the way. Pre-drive is all the way down, but let's hold down a chord and just turn that up. You hear what happened immediately? Got quite a bit more, well, pre-drive. <laughs> And it can sound a bit odd because it's it's in isolation. It's not got any Leslie effect going on, but that's that's Hammond Model One with the pre-drive about halfway up, right there. Now I'm just gonna put all the draw bars in and let you hear them individually with uh, middle C. These are clicky draw bars, which I like. Okay, not a very impressive sound, but if you know the sound of a Hammond without its Leslie, very, very, very close. So let's just put the first three draw bars out and turn the percussion on. I'm gonna put it on second, slow and normal for the percussion. So that's your percussion. Change it to third. I'm gonna turn the organ reverb on just a tiny bit. You can put it on eight. You can tell that reverb is quite sensitive. All right, I'm gonna turn the reverb back off. 
so we can hear that last draw bar pull all those out sorry not the reverb the percussion and i'm going to take you into organ settings so what we do is we click on settings very little menu diving is required here so i want to make that clear this is a stage piano and it's very easy and quick to do most anything but to do more than basic editing they do have some menus so we'll click on settings sound organ settings now this is the control for the organ don't confuse that with the Leslie or the Rotary, okay? That's a separate section, which we will go over in a second. But you've got several sections to the organ settings. And I'm just going to bring those draw bars mostly in. So we've got four. You have leak level, okay? Set at 64. Let's turn it all the way off and you hear the difference. Okay, that's off. And this is all the way up. So the tone wheels in a real organ, depending on which model you have, there's somewhere around 91. On a real Hammond, they would, after a while, the generator, in conjunction with those tone wheels turning uh, right beside the magnets, creating these sine waves, you would have this leak that would happen over time. And so you'd hear this harmonic that would be generated, so listen. That's all the way out, all the way off, basically. And this is all the way back on. So an older organ does tend to have that leakage going on. So I'm gonna take it back to 64, which is the default for Hammond 1. We've got key click level next, it's on 64. Let's turn it all the way up and all the way down. So you can hear that key click increase, um, just like a real organ, especially an older one, has that clicking happening where the contacts are um, being connected when you press the key down and it releases the, the sound via the draw bars. So we will... And I'm not a Hammond expert, I'm not going to pretend to be, um, but that's basically how that works. So I'm going to take that down to 100. I can tell you my C3 over here has some definite key click, and you can hear that. So I like that they added that in, and that's adjustable. Percussion link to one foot. It's on by default. Now this is what that means. That means that when percussion is on, the one foot draw bar, or the one to the far right doesn't do anything, okay? If we turn that off, what it does is it's using the sound generator for that draw bar to create the percussion in a real organ. So this is simulating that. But if for some reason you wanted to, you could turn that off and then you have the percussion and you have the one foot draw bar. So I would leave that on because that's the way a real organ works. Okay. We've got P mod there and you can set the speed, the depth and the initial. And I'll be honest, I don't know what that is. I have not looked at that too deeply. It's not something I use. Okay. Within the same area here, we'll go ahead and explore rotary speaker, even though I'll dive into that a little more in a minute. Rotary speaker, you've got level, so you can adjust the level of the horn, the rotor, the background noise, make it stereo or mono, adjust the speed, so the horn can be slower, faster, rotor can be slower or faster. The acceleration point for the horn and the rotor, the deceleration point for the horn and the rotor, this is when the, the, uh, the rotor on the bottom is that sort of barrel looking thing. Um, if you were to open the back of a Leslie speaker and look, and, and it had both of those moving parts, you'd see the rotor on the bottom spinning. It's got kind of like a baffle inside that really whooshes that air around that big that big woofer. And then on the top, you've got um, you've got the horn, which kind of looks like that. And 
you're able to adjust those things. Uh, super good to be able to do that because not every Leslie speaker sounded the same. Some of them were broken and they got recorded that way and you might want to simulate that sound. That can be fun. So good for them for giving us that much control. All right. Type. And this is important because we got slot A and slot B. Again, we're in the rotary section. So over here under speaker amp, if organ is chosen and the section is on, we got rotary A and rotary B. Within rotary A, you can have three different options. Studio, which is the new 1.2 update YC new Leslie effect. You've got classic and you've got overdrive. And we'll listen to those in a second because right now I'm just going to take you out of all that and go back to the Hammond models. All right, so we're in H1 right now. I'm going to turn the percussion off. Okay. Um, Leslie's on. Let's turn that back off. Because I want you to hear these in isolation first. So this is Hammond 1 with all the draw bars up. This is Hammond 2. And this is Hammond 3. All right, I'm gonna just do four draw bars and let you hear those again. Hammond 1, Hammond 2, Hammond 3. So Yamaha has different explanations for why each one is the way it is, but basically they say that Hammond 1 is a sort of factory fresh sound. Hammond 2 is more of a played in organ. And Hammond 3 is like a rock sound. You'll notice it's got lots of uh, leakage going on there. We'll go back to Hammond 1 there. And we will go to the Leslie and listen to that. So we'll turn on Rotary A. Okay. So let's see. I'm going to go into settings, sound, rotary speaker, type, slot A, and I'm going to let you hear the classic, which is what the YC shipped with originally. And it sounds like this. Again, if you can't see this, I have four draw bars out. I have pre-drive up about halfway, and over here on the speaker amp, drive is up just a little over halfway over there. So Okay, so that's slow. And frankly, it sounds pretty good until you do this. an extra draw bar so you can hear that really okay that's not terrible but it it does not sound like a Leslie speaker getting fast it sounds like a warbly vibrato that just got out of hand and it's very kind of collapsed, so there's not a lot of 3D effect. And honestly, it's not bad until you get really fast. So. Okay, that's classic. That's what you'd be familiar with. That's what the YC shipped with, that rotary effect. I'm going to take you to overdrive now, which is another Leslie effect or rotary effect. I'm going to pull down the volume just a bit here. So. so this is your one, two, three, four. Four draw bars. And then I'm going to hit fast and let you hear that speed up. Uh, 
same thing. It's definitely more of an overdriven sound. But you have the same thing going on. Okay, so... When it really speeds up and ramps up to its highest point, RPM-wise, it just sounds wrong. And yes, you can go in and change. Let's go to acceleration. Um, actually, let's go to speed and change the horn fast to a slower RPM and, and let it ramp up. Let's see, um, pull that out. Almost there. Let's let's crank it up to closer to 403.7. Do you hear how it kind of collapses to a mono stereo field? Now that sounded really, really wrong to say that, but yeah, you're hearing both sides. So it is stereo, right? So we can go in and change to mono. See, it is stereo. You can't see that maybe, but here's mono. And this is stereo. And there is some movement to that, but especially the horn itself just does not sound right. There's not enough movement there for me. It does not sound like you put two microphones, or for that matter, just one on top of a Leslie speaker and mic. It sounds like it's a collapsed kind of effect. And that's what it's shipped with, and that's one of the reasons why I would not have considered this even usable for an organ player until, until this happened. Okay, go to settings, sound, rotary speaker, type. All right, slot A, we've heard overdrive, we've heard classic. Now, this is studio. Just to be fully transparent, I turn the volume up a little and I turn the pre-drive up a little because the EQ is a little different on this effect. So we'll pull that out. And I'm going to just do a, a sweep up real slow and let you hear the Leslie ramp up. So what is happening in that effect is a definite differentiation between the woofer or what we in organ Leslie terms call the rotor the part on the bottom that moves sort of under the woofer. So there's a, there's a downward firing woofer. Okay. And then under that, there's this, barrel looking thing with baffles in it and it, it throws the sound around and that's that's that that low sound in fact I'll demonstrate it because you can adjust you can do this to the other two effects too but I don't think it's super worth it because these are nothing like as realistic as the studio Leslie effect okay this makes this keyboard worth buying this makes these draw bars in this organ section, which is done very, very well, worth using. Before version 1.2, where they added the studio effect for the Leslie, I would have said this was not great. You needed something like a Lester K or a um, ventilator or a Lex or pick your particular Leslie effect. Problem is this only has one set of outputs that can be used at once. You can't route, you know, piano out one and organ out another. It won't let you do that. So it would be useless to put the Leslie pedal in this equation. Anyway, I digress. So I'm going to let you hear just that rotor because I'm going to take the horn and I'm going to turn it all the way down. And I'm going to go back to rotor. And again, this is, this is found in settings sound, rotary speaker, level. Horn is down all the way. Rotor is up all the way to 
27. Turn the volume down a little bit there. Okay. Now listen to that. <laughs> Hard to hear the upper frequencies here. But just listen when I turn this fast. What happens? So just like on my real 147 over there, that moves independently of the horn. All right, I'm going to crank that down just a little so we don't get this ridiculous Doppler effect that makes you dizzy. So we'll take it down to how about 80. And then I'm going to go into horn while still holding the rotor and turn this up so you can hear that separately. And I'm going to turn that up to 50. Now I'm going to let them ramp back down. So I'm going to slow it down. And especially if you've got good headphones on, that is a super noticeable difference in the horn and the rotor. Well done, Yamaha. I mean, seriously. I'm a Nord guy. I said this in the live sets video, but I'm a Nord guy. Use the Stage 3 Compact, use an Electro 5, use an Electro 4. That's been my sort of go-to Hammond in a box, and I sometimes use a ventilator with it. I'm telling you that you can get... You can get that sound out of a Nord and a ventilator. You can't get that sound, sorry to say, out of just the Nord. Not even with the C2. They really, 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 really did their homework when it comes to this. And it just, it makes this organ section a joy to use. It really does. Okay. So that's adjustable independently. Fantastic. Background noise. We're in the rotary speaker section just to bring you back home. Background noise. I'm going to pull the first two draw bars out and let you hear what I'm talking about. It'll be kind of a dark sound and that's okay. Background noise is the sound. So there's a switch to turn that on and off. So we'll turn that on. And then we'll go to level and turn this up. Even without the notes being held down, you can hear that. Now, why does it do that? Why are they trying to put that into your sound? Well, check this out. Let's put all our draw bars up and just speed the Leslie up. What you're hearing there is the horn and the rotor spin independently of one another. And depending on how loud you had your Hammond, uh, sorry, Leslie speaker sitting beside your Hammond or far away from it for that matter, you could hear that happening. Because there's a couple things that are going on with that. It's wind noise, like the actual sound of the horn and the rotor moving because they physically do move. I don't want you to think the speaker itself moves. There's two speakers in there, and they, neither of them move. That's that's a misnomer. People think that the Leslie speaker moves. The speaker itself doesn't move, but the thing that... It's really hard to describe unless you've seen one. Again, we've got this downward-firing woofer on the bottom, and then there's the baffle drum-looking thing, which is spinning. That's the woof, woof, woof sound that you hear in there. And then the... Sound that higher frequencies that you're getting there is the horn, the thing that sort of is crossed like that. That's throwing the upper frequencies around, literally throwing them around. But right now, it's it's not doing anything with the frequencies of the organ. It's just doing what it does if you're just sitting there beside it and it's cranked really loud. So we'll pull that down because it's kind of ridiculously loud. The default apparently is 64, which is a little hard to hear, and that's fine. You probably don't want that sound unless you're really really picky about your organ uh stereo mono okay we're still in still in the uh studio effect and this should be self-explanatory but that's stereo and 
that's mono. This is mono cranked up. A lot of old records sound like that because they just put one like SM57 on there and went to town. But the stereo is nice, especially if you got headphones on. So that's good. Uh, what else we got? That's everything as far as the rotary speaker goes. Um, okay, so what I'm going to do is just play through the Hammond section, one, two, and three, with all three of those rotary speakers on. Okay? Real quick, we won't spend a ton of time doing this because uh, we got other sounds to get to. But this is certainly a highlight of this keyboard, so I don't feel bad spending time on it. People are probably going to buy it, probably should buy it, for this particular section, because it's great. And to have these 88 weighted keys that you can do that on. Um, one thing to be aware of, over here in speaker amp, you can turn the tone up. So that's like EQ, right? So here's a darker kind of bassy heavy, bass bass heavy sound. And if you crank the tone up, you get more of a more of a mid heavy and slight emphasis on the highs. It's kind of a weird sort of sweep EQ works well. There's another one in the A B key section, but that's a good way to brighten up the sound. Now, one thing you might notice. You do, even though it's triple sensor action, you do have to press all the way down to trigger the organ sound, just like you do in any other sound in this thing. And that might be a hardware limitation, but really, it's not. It's not that hard to play on this keyboard, so don't think that you have to trigger it real early play realistic Hammond. I mean, it's not going to be super easy because you you are dealing with the piano keys here, right? So if the 61 key um, is more appealing to you because you're not so much of a piano person, you're more of an organ person, go for that one. It's got the waterfall action. It's going to be hard to do sw uh, swipes on here, glisses, glissandos, with your hand without, you know, taking your ring off for one thing. I'm just going to pull out the one, two, third and fourth drawbar and do that kind of sweep you've heard a million times on a million records kind of thing. So that's hard to do if you're contacting the edge of the keys here with your hand. It's not that rough. It can be done, but yeah, be careful. You don't want to get blood all over the place. <laughs> and in the heat of the moment, you can... But anyway, those keys are not that big a deal to play on. So, um, go back to Hammond 1, settings, sound, rotary speaker, type, slot A. Start with classic. And again, tone is cranked all the way up, so the EQ is a little, a little brighter. Okay, that's classic. This is overdrive. Just pull everything. And studio. You can <laughs> you can hear the difference immediately. I'm gonna turn the percussion off so I can get that last draw. I'll do it with all of them again. This is overdrive. Oof. This is classic. And this is studio. You hear the Doppler effect that's happening where you definitely have a sense of movement. It's not super wide. I think they could give you the option of making it even wider. Hint, hint, Yamaha. That would be a good thing to do in an update. But if they're capable of that, sky's the limit. So there you go. Let's go to Hammond 2 and do the same thing. We'll start with Classic. OK, 
Okay, that's classic. This is overdrive. <laughs> My percussion is off, just for reference, and studio. Real quickly, Hammond 3, same thing. Pull out all the drawbars. All right, I'm not gonna show this to you, but there is a split option, so you can do lower and upper, and you can do a split for the organ. Um, you can do separate sections, so it's like having two presets at your disposal, or like two sets of drawbars. On the real Hammond, there are four sets of drawbars with a pedal set in the middle, but... So I've got lower on, which is using the Hammond 3. I could go to upper and change it to Hammond 1. Nope, sorry, that's wrong. The, the model has to stay the same for each, um, each draw bar set. So back to Hammond 3, which is where we were. Lower, upper. But that's useful if you're doing like, you know. And you just suddenly want to go without pulling the draw bars. So if you wanted to do kind of a call and response gospel thing. Pretty cool. Uh, something you probably have noticed is there are different colors. We'll go into settings. We'll go into draw bar color. And we're in lower, so let's go to upper. White, red, very Nord looking, which obviously this, <laughs> yeah, they took a page from their book. Yellow, green, it's cool green. Cyan, which is a sort of light blue teal kind of looking color. Blue, and magenta. And it's cool when you get to the FM organs, they actually split these up and they can be several different colors at one time. So I like, I think the red one best and probably blue and just white. Very cool. So you might not be able to see this or you might, but you've actually got two things going on here. You've got where the draw bars are on the screen. So you got a visual and they're all out here. So. But you also see it here in these LEDs, which are pretty fantastic. And you've got see-through little strips on these draw bars. So when you set your organ, and let's say, let's say the draw bars are up here, but the preset changes and they all come down here, you can see through. This is something that's hard to explain. You have to kind of see it to, to get what I'm saying, but really good job implementing both the Nord approach and the, um, well, it's kind of like Nord's two different approaches because the Electro series and the Stage 3 Compacts have a uh, physical draw bars, sliders that you can pull out. Um, but the fact that they did that and the LEDs is really cool. Plus you get that feedback here showing you where those are. So that's draw bar color. That's cool. Um, one thing I didn't show you is vibrato and chorus. So let's pull the first three out. This is the Hammond Model 1. Chorus is C. Vibrato is V, obviously. But we'll go to vibrato 1 and just let you hear that. Okay, that's one. There's two. There's three. Might be hard to hear without some extra draw bars out, so we'll go back to one. Vibrato one. Vibrato two. Vibrato three. 
And I'm going to turn the Leslie speaker off because you can you can hear that better with the Leslie off. So again, vibrato one, vibrato two, vibrato three. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Chorus one, chorus two, chorus three. Strangely, that seems easier to hear with the Leslie on, so we'll turn that back on and go to chorus one. I'm actually going to stop the Leslie. There's a stop section, which is cool. Chorus two, chorus three. All draw bars out again. Chorus one, chorus two, chorus three. And crank up the Leslie. No chorus, no vibrato. Chorus three. And this is a very kind of gospel sound, this uh, upside down smiley face with the chorus three on. Put some piano behind that, and man, let's go with the C7. Okay, that's fun. <laughs> Got some chords knocking around here. You can probably hear those. Sorry. All right, let's come back to Earth. <clears throat> okay, so that's the organ section as far as the Hammond models go. We haven't even touched the FM organs yet. So let's do that now. So you got H1, H2, and H3. F1 is FM1, and these are actual FM synthesized sounds. So think DX7. This is a organ sound created with FM synthesis. You'll notice not all the drawbars light up. Just these. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So let's turn the Leslie speaker off. And because I showed you what it sounds like with overdrive and with classic, I'm not going to do all those for every one of these six FM organs. You kind of got the idea with the Hammond models and you can explore that on your own, but I am going to leave the, uh, studio Leslie sound on for these FM organs to let you kind of hear that. Um, I'll toggle it on and off. So you'll hear it either on or off. So right now we'll start with off and we'll just pull these out one at a time, just like with the other organ. So I'm gonna hold down middle C. You'll notice <laughs> the organ settings under settings, sound, organ settings, leak, key click, all that stuff. Very few of them do anything for the FM generated organs. Again, I want to emphasize these are not models. They're models of organs, yes, but these are not models. These are actual FM synth synthesis 
occurring here to create these sounds. I'm going to turn pre-drive down and actually turn drive down over here as well so you get that clean tone. But I want you to notice H1, listen to how similar this sounds to F1. Percussion and all that doesn't work because, again, this is FM synthesis and we're we're not in Hammond world anymore. This is like a really, really clean Hammond almost. Pre-drive does work. So you get that kind of buzzy sound and drive does work on the uh, rotary speaker, but. So pre-drive is up about halfway, volume's all the way up and uh, the Leslie speaker effect rotary is off. But let's turn it on. Hmm. That's a pretty convincing Hammond kind of sound. So keep that in mind. If you want a really, really clean kind of Hammond sound, that might be an option to explore. These FM organs. All of them don't sound like that, though. We're going to go through all of them. There are six. So FM, FM organ one. That sounds remarkably... Similar to a Hammond. Pretty cool. All right. FM2. Do the same thing. Oh, let me turn off pre-drive and turn off the Leslie so you can hear this in isolation. All right, so that's, that's FM, FM2, FM organ 2. Let's go back to one with those same drawbar settings and hear the difference. Yeah, this is two, this is one. So we're well out of Hammond territory now. We have a boxy kind of sound. Like a continental sort of. And I wish vibrato could be turned on because <laughs> it's kind of begging for it. Hmm. That's something Yamaha should definitely do because that sounds remarkably like a Vox Continental. All right, moving on to FM3. Oh, sorry. Let's go back to FM2 and, and hear the rotary. Turn the pre-drive up. I mean, it sounds kind of Hammond-like when you turn on the rotary speaker, yes, but otherwise by itself, not so much. FM3, no rotary on. No drive, no pre-drive. <laughs> okay, we're, we're way out in left field now. This doesn't sound anything like a hammer. And I'm not gonna try and tell you how FM synthesis works. You can look that up on your own. This video is going to be too long anyway. But that is a very different thing than the FM1 and FM2. It can be fun. You can add some effects over here to it. I mean, um, let's, let's just do that. Let's put a, uh, I don't know, how about a tremolo? And crank it way up. Depth and rate. There's other effects we can we can mess with, but we won't at the moment. So that's F3. Let's let's do four draw bars. Eh, let's do them all and turn on the rotary. Ha! Wow. Pre-drive's not even on. Okay, all the way about halfway. Amazing. 
amazing how Hammondy that gets, huh? Hammondy is that a word? No. Yeah. All right. Rotary off. Pre-drive all the way down. FM organ four. Whoa! What just happened? Look at that. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven draw bars active. None of our percussion and all that works. It's fine. No, they're all active now. Whoa. Oh, interesting. Hmm. Percussion turns on. Last two draw bars. Very interesting. Does that work with three and two? No. <laughs> okay. These are new, by the way. These are new, um, new FM sounds that were added with 1.2. But same test as before. Pre-drives down, volumes up, organ rotaries off, middle C. Interesting. FM organ five. Pre drive down, volume up, rotary off, middle C. <laughs> Jeez. Uh, what else is going on here? It sounds like there's other effects on. Crazy. That sounds very, uh, oh, cool. Look at that. When you split the, when you go to lower, sound is the same, but you can break up the draw bars colors. That's, that's cool. All right. To crank the pre-drive halfway, turn the rotary up. I can see that being used for real rock sounds. Craziness. Okay, F6. Rotary off. Pre-drive down. Volume up. Middle C. Well, goodness, we're in we're in Weirdville now. Drive halfway up, rotary speaker on. And that completes our organ section tour. Organ section off, rotary off. We'll just go to a new initial sound to just clear everything out. Oh, here's a good example of what I was talking about earlier. So here where our default kind of sound is three draw bars out, not all the way, but very close. You can see through these little windows here on the draw bars to still see what's going on there. And uh, pretty cool, you can actually see it from this side so the audience can see your draw bars. Pretty cool. See, they go away when you when you do that. But that's it for the organ engine. We're going to leave that out. From here forward, we're going to...
explore the key sections. All right, individual sounds in the key sections. So these are identical, okay? Keys A and keys B are the same, meaning you can duplicate the sound from one to another. You can also do things like octaves up and down <coughs> with pianos if you wanted to, that kind of thing. <clears throat> Excuse me. So we're not going to look at section B. And the reason is because they're the same. Okay? I don't want you to think, oh, he skipped B. B is A, A is B. They have the abilities of each other, the capabilities of one another. They're not different. You can make them two different things for sure, but they're essentially two identical engines. Okay? So we've got organ and keys A and B, which can be identical if you want. All right? So first sound in A, again, keys section, we'll just call it. Piano. Remember, we have these categories, piano, electric piano, synth, and others. So we'll start with piano. CFX is your first tone. nearly as loud as the organ, so I'll turn up the volume just a bit. And I don't want you to think these keys are super loud or anything. They're really not. Um, you're hearing a condenser mic up here picking up everything I'm doing as well as my voice. So maybe you're hearing flies from outside. Who knows? It's quite sensitive. And a great mic, by the way. It's like the cheap U87. No joke. It's <laughs> it's a great mic. Fantastic. With a bit of EQ and compression and some real, real, real basic editing, you can make just about anything sound like the U87. Spend enough time with it, and I am convinced you could do identical. But I digress. Again, it's late. CFX, okay? So... Within keys A, here, volume is all the way up. It can be turned down or up. Must have just had that cranked for the organ. Guess I could turn my phones up a little bit. So let's explore. Um, let's explore the uh, tone knob here. So this is all the way down. Tone zero. Reverb's very, very, very low. By the way, let's create just a little, little reverb. Put it on. Uh, 12, how about that? Reverb depth is 14, that's right. It's actually quite a bit still. How about eight? There we go. So that sounds a little dark with tone all the way down. Crank tone halfway and you get Crank tone all the way up, and you get. So it's doing things with dynamics too, just seems like it, just a little bit. And since we're in a non organ sound now, this would be a good time to talk about the touch curve. So uh, I won't get into the touch sensitivity. That's a different thing. You can look that up on your own. Again, this is just sounds, it's the main focus of this not the particular settings within the deep parts of the keyboard. So look up depth and um, touch sensitivity and all that on your own. But touch curve right here on the front, you got a button that says touch. It's set to normal by default. It can be fixed. So no matter how hard 
or soft, get the same thing. You can change it to wide, which some people like. You might get along just fine with it. We've got hard, so. Got to really, really hit it to get that high velocity. And soft, so you don't have to hit as hard. Now, I'm using open back headphones. This is probably a good time to address this. I'm using, um, <laughs> I had to look, Sennheiser HD 660S headphones. They're great, really, really great. But they are open back and they're very likely picking up some of the sound in the microphone. So you may hear a little bit of that. Sorry, I didn't wanna wear closed back headphones for this demo. Don't know why, I just didn't, so. Expression pedal is still tied to that, and that's fine. Okay, touch curve is soft. Which for the CFX actually I think works pretty well. Um, normal. By the way, that's how you choose anything on this keyboard. You, you navigate what navigation knob and you press down to enter that could be more robust um, it just doesn't feel all that super tight and it's probably going to be fine over over the years but it, it could be a little more robust these knobs in general are fairly tight but they yeah they could be more robust all right back to touch normal sorry Take my foot off this expression pedal. You might want to adjust that, depending on what sound you're using. For the CFX, the soft works well, in my opinion. Normal is pretty good too. So we'll just keep it on normal for now. Next sound. Um, I think I have a little critter in here. It's getting warmer outside, so it sounds like I hear him flying around. Sorry, you might hear that. You might not. Again, real life. Unedited. <laughs> <coughs> Including my cold. All right. Um, let's stick with the CFX for a second, and let's look at some effects. Um... Tone knob is cranked all the way up, so you get this. Nice sound, nice dynamic, punchy piano. You can turn the tone down a little and it's more. Realistic, a little darker, that's fine. Okay, um, effects. Let's just go to effect one. Very first one is They're 35, by the way. So first one is chorus, G chorus. And this is with the depth knob halfway and the rate knob also, also halfway. Chorus, SPX chorus. Symphonic chorus. Eight sixteen chorus. My sustain pedal's running away. <laughs> Flanger. 
VCM flanger. Cross FB flanger. Not likely to be effects you're going to use on piano, but it definitely gives you a feel for it. Again, depth is adjustable. So is rate, but right now they're both halfway, so it gives you some idea of what the sound is like. Phaser, VCM stereo phaser. Small phaser. Max 90 phaser. Dual phaser. Interesting. I'll crank the tone knob up a little more. Tremolo. Cool. Auto pan. Again, these are not likely to be sounds you'd use with these effects, these these pianos. You'd probably do that with electric pianos. You'd do that with guitars. You'd do that with maybe synth stuff. But this gives you an idea of what this sounds like in isolation. Now, here's a cool thing. You don't always want to use your rotary speaker effect with your piano if you're looking to get the rotary speaker effect because you might also want... The rotary to apply to the organ, okay? Uh, this little bug flying around is driving me crazy. Sorry. So, they've built in a simple rotary. Which, if you take the rate down slows the effect and it actually will show you on the front here slow fast so that's kind of cool distortion british combo let's go back to halfway for the rate it's not something you can hear ton going on until you crank up the depth. Distortion 2, British lead. Distortion 3, small stereo. Whew, let's turn the volume down for that one. I'm turning the organ down. <laughs> Here we go. These these uh, effects, by the way, can apply to the organ as well, not just keys A and B. Compressor. You're in the compressor EQ category, so 17 is the compressor. Because depth is way up, right? Rate is halfway, so let's turn depth down. And rate up, and that increases the gain effectively. Quite substantially, so turn the gate, I mean the uh, depth up, and you get it's a pretty good compressor. Tone control, just like we're used to down here. Only you can kind of double up the effect, so you can have an even darker piano. If you turn tone down here and here. Turn them both up and you get a real bright. You might want to do that, man. I don't know. Um, one band EQ narrow. Okay, this is this is a good thing to be able to have because you've got depth and rate, but just listen to what happens. I'm going to just play some chords here. 
So it's sweeping it, right? You can adjust the depth. So you get a, a minor, sort of hard to hear change, or quite a bit. E2, or sorry, um, effect 20, which is labeled in here as E3, is one band EQ wide. So what we just had was one band EQ narrow. So that's like a sort of uh, filter that just does that, right? So it just curves it either up or down all the way, like a low pass or a high pass almost. Um, wah. Let's turn the depth halfway and the rate halfway so we get... Auto wah, that is. <laughs> Very interesting. Touch wah. Turn the depth up. So you get the... You'd use that on a clavinet type sound, most likely. Pedal wah, which I don't have the correct pedal plugged in to do that. That's fine. Delay, cross delay. Turn depth all the way up and rate all the way up. Turn rate all the way down. I can get out of hand quickly. This is digital delay. That's fun. Analog delay. Stomach's growling, sorry. Turn depth up and... <laughs> very nice, very cool. And you could enable that over here and use tap tempo to adjust it. Can't do that anywhere else except this effects section. Room reverb. Yes, you have a separate reverb insert effect from the master. So let's turn the master reverb off so you can hear the difference. Let's turn depth about halfway and rate about halfway. Room reverb. Wow. Turn depth down three clicks and rate three clicks. We'll crank that rate up. Depth up, right down. Very cool. Hall reverb. When most people think reverb, that's usually the um, algorithm they have in mind is, is a hall reverb. That's pretty, pretty cool. Turn the depth down a little and the rate up. Down a little. <laughs> can be tricky to get right.
I like how it just grabs it and kills the reverb effect when you're adjusting it, so. Very cool. Reverse reverb. Oh, this will be fun. So let's turn that up. Depth up, rate up. Depth down. Right up. Very cool. Lo-fi. Holy cow. Rate halfway, depth halfway. Let's turn rate all the way down and depth mostly down. And again, each section can have two insert effects active at the same time. And you have the option of doing a third if you want to. That seems usually like too many effects to me, but you know, if you want to do that, go for it. That lo-fi is very interesting. What else we got? Um, ring modulator. Yep, that's... Wow. And Slicer. This is cool. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. Depth all the way down, right all the way up. Crazy. Depth about a uh, quarter of the way up, right halfway. Very interesting effect. And that is adjustable, so cool. Low pass filter. This is huge, especially for synth sounds, but. Let's turn depth all the way up. Rate. Oh, interesting. Okay. Mm. So depth is the filter. Rate acts more like the... Uh, escaping me right now. I've been doing synthesis forever. But you have cutoff and... <laughs> oh, I'm tired. Anyway, you get the idea. You can do those filter sweeps like this. You actually have a separate filter down here, which we'll talk about in a second, but... Damper resonance. This is good. This is this is very good for piano. All right, I'm gonna turn the reverb. Oh, it is off. Reverb off. Depth halfway for damper resonance. Rate halfway. So we get. Now, if I hold down the damper. Wow. Turn the rate all the way down. Turn the depth down a bit more. That's more realistic, maybe a three. So you get the, the ringing of the body of the piano when the damper is held down. And even without the damper, you get, see this is off. On. Turn the reverb on, crank it up a little bit, and you have quite a...
got to be careful with all that reverb. Goodness. All right. That's a damper. Now, under miscellaneous, we have something called harmonic enhancer. Mm, reverb off. Depth all the way up. Rate all the way up. Very interesting. Doing some, <clears throat> well, it's it's enhancing the harmonics depending on where in the frequency you, you have it set. And that completes our sort of tour of the effects. Why didn't I do that with electric pianos or organs or synths or something? Because you can't necessarily hear the effect as well. It blends into those sounds and that's why we love using those effects on those kind of sounds. But I will do that for some electric pianos um, some of the effects anyway, so you can, can get an idea of what that sounds like, because you do buy this keyboard for two reasons. Great sounds and this organ engine. It's kind of a full package. So, coming back full circle, we'll turn our reverb on just a tiny bit to uh, nine, okay? Whoa! <laughs> Chorus is still on. What else is still on here? Something is not right. Oh, rotary speaker was on. Well, yeah, let's show that. Why not? Speaker. There you go. Rotary speaker with a piano. Interesting. Okay. Next sound. Tone halfway. So we're keeping everything fair. S700. This is a grand piano. Definitely a darker one. Turn the tone up. going to take the touch and turn it to soft. Reverb back on. Too much, too much, too much. Not my favorite piano sound in here, but it's fine. C7 is next. I do want to crank the tone knob up for that one. I just like that. Actually turn 
turn some damper resonance on for this too, why not? No reverb. Damper resonance. Not that much. You can definitely hear it when I step on the pedal. Crank up. Yeah, wow. Too much, too much, too much. Turn the reverb on again. Okay, that's that's an initial sound. Um, I'm actually gonna go to the <clears throat> C7 setting in here, which is right here. So they've got a little different thing going on. Slightly different verb going on. C7 is probably one of my favorite <clears throat> uh, piano samples in here. All right, we want to go back to initial. So we're just starting from scratch. A little bit of reverb, not much at all. Let's see here. Um, Oh yeah, C7 is where we were. Nashville C3 is next in the piano category. <clears throat> I'm just going to play through it real quickly. I adjusted my headphones, not the sound. Interesting sample. I'm not at all sure what I think of it. <clears throat> Live C3 is next. Actually, let me go back to C3, Nashville C3, and turn the tone knob up so you hear. What that does to the sound, it does a lot to the sound. It makes almost every aspect of it more in your face. So let's change the touch to hard. How about that? And listen to the difference. Okay, 
live CF3. Take the tone knob back to the middle. middle. So again, you're basically hearing these sounds in isolation. All I'm doing is adding the tone. This is all the way up. Which definitely increases the mid lows and the... Body of that sound. Curious. Curious what that does to each, each sound. It's sort of different each time. Pretty cool. So this is a live CF3. It's a sample that some users apparently requested from the CP300. I mean, it isn't bad, but it's a dated sound. You've heard this in the music of the 90s for sure. Anyway, that's not bad, but that's that one. Now, one of my you uh, <laughs> can't talk right. One of my favorite samples in the keyboard is the U1 upright. This one. Definitely got a short delay. Uh, sorry, decay. You can adjust that here, but I'm not going to do that. We're going to leave it on its default. And by here, I'm pointing to the envelope generator. So we got just a tiny bit of reverb. And this U1 upright sound. One of the reasons I love the Nord Piano Library so much is because they have so many good characterful upright sounds. And this is Yamaha's famous U1. Let's crank the tone up to that. Isn't it odd how that, that enhances that sound in a totally different way than the CF3? Turn the tone all the way down and you get this nice woody dark. stuff doing weird especially there's those those strings you can hear that kind of happening uh, the strings buzzing a little bit and that's okay because if you want that upright kind of sound you got you're gonna want some imperfections in there To be honest, that's just one of the best upright sounds, one of the best piano sounds that I've found in a keyboard, period. It's really great. Now you could enhance that with a little bit of compression. works well for this upright sample. Let's crank it up a bit more to the rate so you get more volume. Turn the volume down a little. Turn the tone 
come down all the way. change touch too hard listen to the difference so I have to work a lot harder to do this tone halfway up Good, 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 good stuff. Turn off the compressor. Next sound, <clears throat> still in the piano category. CP81. Volume up. Okay, to be fair, tone all the way up. You would expect Yamaha to have good CP samples because they, in fact, made the CP-70. That's kind of begging for chorus, so let's turn a little of that on. Okay, compression off, course off. Next sound, CP82. and put it back on normal. No chorus. Cool. Piano and strings. Sounds like a C7. Let's test that. Let's go back to the C7. Let's go back to the CFX. Hmm. Okay, back to the piano and strings. Okay, it's a CFX. CFX with some strings in there. Halfway. Okay, piano synth. Would you want that kind of sound when you have pads and synths and you got pianos why wouldn't you just make your own well because you could not for example do a piano a pad an electric piano and an organ unless you had something like this that was 
layered together. So it's nice that they provided that. Very nice. Okay, so that completes our piano section. So next is the electric pianos. Just a tiny bit of reverb. This is what it sounds like with no reverb. This is the 78 Rhodes, tone all the way up. This is the, the raw, the naked sample with a little bit of reverb, that's it. curve to soft for this one. I'm going to turn the compression on. Keep depth real low and the rate up. So basically we're just gaining, gaining up the sound a little bit. It means definitely still compressing it. You can hear the difference. General, go to I.O. Volume, turn USB audio to 127. I'm sorry, not USB audio, output. It was on 6, and I'm going to increase it to 15. Turn my master down just a tad. absolutely nothing in this mode. <laughs> That's interesting. Did not realize that. In case you didn't realize what I was doing, I'm outputting the signal from the YC into my SSL 2 Plus here using the USB out straight into the computer. That's not true. I created an aggr aggregate device. The only thing I'm using the SSL for is the mic. That's it, just the mic, which you can hear picking up the little critter behind me. Little thing flying around. Driving me just a little bit crazy, as I said. Okay. Probably cut that out. But I forgot. Um, no control for the USB out. Master volume does nothing. Is that right? Is that really right? It really doesn't. I didn't realize. Okay. So, menu, general, IO volume, output. I'm going to increase it to 12, 12 dB. Again, no effects on except for a little reverb on this RD um, Rhodes, 78 RD, 78 Rhodes essentially. Okay, in my opinion, that raw tone from that electric piano sample. is great.
really, really realistic. Sometimes manufacturers will go overboard <clears throat> with what they're trying to do with samples, what they're trying to do with their presets, with their sounds. Korg, for example, gives you a beautiful, bright, shiny, awesome, um, just your ears go, wow, electric piano selection right out of the gate with their Kronos and Nautilus and SV1 and SV2 and all their stuff. But... <laughs> This is much more like the Nord approach, which just gives you the raw basic sample and you can add to it whatever you want. So if you want to add some chorus, or how about some phaser. Or what's more likely with a electric piano, probably a auto pan. Now, what do you often do with electric pianos? You run them through amps. So, I'm gonna turn on, well, the rotary first, let's try that. I'm gonna turn off the uh, auto pan because you, you don't want a rotary and an auto pan going at the same time. That's kind of the same effect, so. Spacey. Turn the drive up. Turn the reverb down. Turn the tone knob up. On the amp section. Tone knob up on the keys A section. It's too much drive, probably, so let's go halfway. By the way, that's still just the, the uh, Leslie. You could hit stop on the Leslie and get more of a... Start it back up and you hear it. Let's figure out which Leslie that is. Type. Slot A is studio. My favorite. For fun, let's just hear the other two. Overdrive. Not terrible. Classic. Yep, they don't hold a candle to studio. So let's get out of rotary and get into the amp simulation. So lead, UK lead is what this is called. Tones all the way up, let's get it halfway instead. Actually, let's go all the way down and hear the difference. You get a real low end. Halfway is about halfway with low and high. <laughs> I'm gonna turn my auto pan effect back on. Tone knob all the way down so we darken the sound a little. Tone in the uh, keys section, not the amp section.
Okay. Tone all the way up in the amp section. Drive all the way up. Why not? UK lead. Almost sounds like a Leslie when you increase the rate of the auto pan. Way too much drive, but it's kind of nice. I think Yamaha did an outstanding job with their VCM modeling with these amp models. I think they do a better job. Sorry, Nord. Than Clavia. DMI, which is Nord. <clears throat> Just all around with the effects. I think Nord, Nord is uh, playing catch up at this point. Even though I love my stage three. Love it. Love the compact. Love being able to take it with me anywhere. Just grab it and go. Yamaha's definitely stepping on their toes. Um, they got some work to do. They really do to catch up. So anyway, we're in, uh, just to bring everything back to earth here, we're in 78 roads. <laughs> Tiny bit of reverb, auto pan, lead, UK lead is our speaker amp model. Now we're in UK crunch. With the tone all the way up, let's go halfway. Let's turn the drive up more. Pen to tremolo. Why not? Increase the rate a bit. Turn the depth down a tad. Or go crazy and turn the depth all the way up. That's too much. turn the amp section off and just hear that tremolo and uh, reverb with the 78 roads. Tone knobs all the way down. This is halfway on the keys A section. And this is all the way up. simulation is a what's it called US double I'm gonna say that's a fender turn the drive down about halfway no that's not halfway halfway oh that breaks up just perfectly no tremolo. Let's change that to a phaser. How about a Max 90, which of course is the MX L. Depth out of that face. 
Razor. Tone halfway down ish. Phaser is a common one, but let's also go to uh, flanger. Ooh, that's more subtle. That's nice. It's almost a chorusy effect. much fun. U.S. case speaker amp model. No tremolo. Crank up the drive. I wish I did, but I got work tomorrow. Don't have all the time in the world, so we're not going to go through every effect with every electric piano or every synth or any of the rest of that. So, gives you an idea of the effects with electric piano. That's Rhodes, uh, 78 Rhodes. This is 75 Rhodes Funky. I'm going to turn the speaker amp off. Leave the tremolo on. Why not? Well, this is with it, this this is with it off. off. Speaker amp simulation is off. Let's go back to auto pan because that is kind of a nice subtle effect. No reverb. That's 75 roads funky. with the tone knob all the way up. Okay, tone knob in the middle. Next EP is 73 Rhodes. Can you hear the difference, the distinct? This is with the uh, tone knob all the way. In the middle ish. No auto pin. Auto pin. Next roads is a sixty seven roads dark. In the middle. 
at 67 dark. 67 bright. It gets even brighter if you crank up the tone knob. effects <coughs> in isolation from one to five this is 78 rows tone knob all the way up 75 rows funky 73 rows 67 rows dark 67 rows bright okay Auto pan back on, reverb back on. Next one, 73 Road Studio. Tone knob halfway. Ooh, that's nice. Imagine what that sounds like with the different amp simulations. Really nice. 74 Rhodes Stage. Tone knob halfway. just say this. Nobody has done a Wurlitzer in a keyboard as good as this. Nobody. They haven't done it yet. Up to the time of the creation of the CP and the YC series, nobody <clears throat> has put a great Wurlitzer sample in a keyboard. Nord comes close, but it's it's just not quite there. I've never been super happy with that sample. I do like the sample, but it's just not quite. I'm always tweaking it. I'm always adjusting things. I'm always doing things. I'm like, it's not, not quite right. But this. Let's make it trim a little. Holy cow. Turn the tone, the tone knob. Depth is a little much. I'm going to turn on the case with a little bit of drive for this simulation for the speaker. Too much drive. Turn it down. Turn the compression off. Compression 
transmission back on. Drive off. Too much reverb. Ha ha. Great. That's Wurlitzer Warm. Keeping those subs same settings. <clears throat> this is Wurlitzer Bright. Do you hear that? Let's turn off. Turn off the reverb. Turn off the uh, uh, <clears throat> effects. <laughs> That's nice. I feel like I've got a real worldly sitting right here. A 200 just, just sitting right here. speaker right here with a little SM57 right there and a ribbon mic. It's just... That's the Wurlitzer Bright. This is Wurlitzer Y. You can hear these are different, right? This is Wurlitzer Warm. Wurlitzer Bright. Wurlitzer wide. When I was at Sweetwater, Blake Angelos was telling me about these <clears throat> uh, whirlies and how they recorded them, and they apparently took the transformer for the whirly in a different room and recorded it so you don't get all that noise and weirdness from the buzzing from the <clears throat> from the transformer I almost would have bought this keyboard just for that Wurlitzer sample to be honest with you super good almost 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 I wouldn't have spent this much on a keyboard if it didn't like all the other sounds too but this ooh boy that 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 is a excellent whirly. Just super dynamic too. Let's crank the volume down just a tiny bit and go. Great. Love it. Moving on. Clavi B. Okay. You can't do a clavinet without a little bit of wah. So let's go into our touch wah and turn that on well this is what it is without it okay no compression a little bit of reverb can you hear that let off that's cool they added that now i am not as i've confessed in many videos not a clavinet player but Turn on the touch wall. A little bit of uh, case, US case drive. Crank it up a little. <laughs> Or so you can do this kind of thing. Cool, really cool. Oops, I just did the wrong thing. Uh, depth all the way up, right down. <laughs> 
sound for sure. Depth down. You can of course apply that same thing to the pedal if you wanted to do it with a with a foot controller. <clears throat> All right, that's Clavi B. This is Clavi S. Of course, we're talking about different pickups inside of the clavinets. This is with no uh, Ottawa. And no amps in. That's an almost harpsichord-y kind of sound. So, oops, let's... um. Let's turn the touch wall back on. Who says you can't play clavinet on weighted keys? <laughs> all right, turning all the weird effects off for this next sound, which is a harpsichord. Hear the let off? I'm glad they included that. Let's change the touch to normal. All those 70 songs you might want to cover that's kind of nice what else we got okay now we're getting into territory i'm not particularly fond of but um promise to play through all the single voices so here we go fm piano da even i know that that's sort of begging for some chorus so let's go into the beginning and go to uh g chorus Honest, I'm not going to spend too much time on these sounds. I don't like them. <laughs> you might like them. I'm going to play enough for you to get an idea of what they are. But... And you could certainly put like a pad under them. And... Be in DX heaven. DX7 heaven. FM piano DA. Next one, FM DX road. No chorus. stop for a second because I said I didn't like the sounds that I'm playing right now. I don't mean that I don't like them in the sense that they're bad sounds. They're not my taste, but they are a great replica. Mm, wrong word. A great um, reproduction. There we go. 
of the FM pianos that you probably know and love if you're a DX7 lover. I still have one around here somewhere. But FM, the EP, these FM organs we were doing earlier, and the FM sounds, they say FM whatever, uh, pad or FM EPs, those are actually being generated with real FM synthesis inside of the keyboard. Now, you can't get in there and do a whole lot of adjusting to it, <clears throat> but apparently they are real FM sounds, so cool. FM DX EP. Oh, I'm going back to Twin Peaks here. The show. I liked the show. I'm not playing the Twin Peaks theme. That would be illegal. my nightmares if I did that for real which he probably will if I watch much of his stuff but that's probably the idea getting late I digress 18 <clears throat> FM PF's heart still in the e-piano category chorus is on no chorus they need chorus they just kind of beg for that sound these are very dynamic samples by the way I mean sorry synths <laughs> cool FM Urban EP if it's urban I kind of probably should be going like like a rap song I can't rap I'm not going to embarrass myself by trying but FM power clavi no chorus wow Chorus. I think 80s stuff always has chorus on it. Lots and lots of it. Okay, that concludes our EP Hennos. What's next? <clears throat> I'm going to keep this next section pretty brief. Haha. <laughs> but this is uh, our synth category. The first one is an FM saw pad. So I'm going to turn the chorus off, keep our reverb on, and just play what we got. <laughs> Now, here's where I'm going to highlight something. Going to highlight <clears throat> envelope generator and filter here in the keys A section. I'm going to hit hold down the exit and I'm going to adjust. And here you get attack, decay, sustain, release. Well, there's no sustain. It's just A, D, R. So, and you get different versions of that, which is cool. And you can do the... Um, little treasure hunt to find those by holding down the exit key and then adjusting your EG amount knob here. And so if I wanted to do attack, decay, and release, crank that all the way up and you get ridiculous amount of all of it. Crank it all the way down and you get somewhere in the middle it's more like somewhere closer to the Three quarters mark, you get. It's still a pretty huge and sort of overwhelming kind of sound. So let's take the tone knob and crank it up and see what happens. You hear the noise in that. I guess Yamaha thought, for some reason, that we all wanted to sound like we all had the old DX7 when we're playing these sounds. Mm, the converters weren't awesome in it, and so it, <laughs> it sounds really noisy. <laughs> hear that totally unnecessary to have that aliasing and weirdness in there in my opinion that's just stupid look if you're gonna make something new and you're gonna make it sound like something old improve the things that people didn't like about the old thing 
you know, Juno Chorus, for example. Hello, why do we want that swirling, whooshing noise in that sound? I don't know. Anyway, next, uh, next thing here I want to show you is the filter. Same kind of thing, you have this sort of hidden Easter egg deal where you hold down the exit when you've chosen filter, because this button doubles as EG, envelope generator, and filter. And if you'll notice, we've got flat resonance. Oh, that's the word I was looking for earlier. Resonance and cutoff. Okay, with the low pass filter. We've got flat resonance, we've got reso minus, reso minus B, reso minus C, reso boost, A and B, so on and so forth. But let's just keep it at flat reso and see what happens. So. Notice here, um, you can kind of hear some stuff happening, but let's adjust it from flat reso to say reso plus. And then let's go from reso plus to reso minus. minus A to reso minus B. And then um, reso minus C. And finally reso boost A. And reso boost, oops, I'm <laughs> with the tone knob. Uh, reso boost B. That's okay, but I'm going to change it back to flat reso. Keep it in the middle, and I'm going to go over here to this effect, and I'm going to go into miscellaneous and go to LP filter. That's low pass filter. So listen to what happens. That's the resonance, okay? That's what I was trying to do earlier. Resonance. Let's crank resonance all the way down. Now you hear the low pass filter. Oh, look at that. I just closed the filter all the way. So, what we can do is have our low pass filter on. This works great for pads, especially if you're looking for like a warm, big pad sound. Um, hold down the exit. I'll let go of that for now. Go to um, filter control and go to reso boost B. Turn the resonance down or up. I got it all the way up. Now I'm adjusting my low pass filter over here. I'm gonna keep the resonance down for that. But that lets me adjust the filter. Let's go to um, Reso Boost B. Basically, now let's turn up the uh, reverb. Why not? And look over here, we still have an effect open. So why don't we turn that on and choose chorus? Now 
have radically altered the way that sounds. So that gives you an example of how you can you can do some cool stuff with the with the sounds to make pads better. Pull the tone knob down a bit. Let's change our EQ from wide to narrow. Increase the depth and pull that down. You hear what's happening there? So you can you can do some EQ stuff individually in patches that way. All right, enough messing with all that, but I am gonna keep keep all that. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm gonna open up a different sound, a new um, internal sound. Uh, sorry, initialized sound. So basically, we're starting from scratch. So the FM pad used to sound like this. Okay, now we're in analog pad, and I think that's eminently useful sound. I'm going to go to filter. You can't do this on the CP. I really wish they had done this, but for whatever reason they didn't. See, I'm changing the filter. Technically it says resonance, but it feels more like cut off. I mean, it, it is, it's, it's cut off and resonance at the same time. So it's raising cut off and resonance stays flat. So we get this. And keep in mind that sound started off like this. And it became this. And you say, oh, that's just way too much sustain happening there. The decay is not where I would like it to be. No problem. Hit your EG button and go crank it all the way down. And so you get. But it's super dry. Well, okay, fine. Crank up your reverb. your chorus no chorus chorus your symphonic chorus and you can do all sorts of other stuff with the pads but <coughs> quite a lot of uh, editing can be done with ADSR and the low pass filter for sure Okay, so that was analog pad. This is dark light. I'm not gonna mess with it. I'm just gonna let you hear it. Let me make sure that that is in fact an initialized sound so it doesn't carry over any of the things I did. It sounds very dark and 80s like really. Crank the tone up a bit. Sounds like an FM sound, doesn't it? It's got that noise in there for sure. Digipad. Begging for chorus. Changes that quite a bit, just transforms it. Noble pad. change the filter so you can you can hear what's happening if I close that turn the tone up and increase the reverb it becomes a much softer sound turn some chorus on turn the reverb down a bit Kind of a far cry from where it started, right? All right, pop pad. Nice, fat saw. 
a lot of potential there. Let's just crank the filter down and see. Very nice, very nice. Filter all the way open. <clears throat> Angel Pad. Just initialize this sound. Make sure we're good. Don't want any of my edits to follow me. That's all. Angel. Uh, hold on, I think we skipped some. Angel Pad uh, FM Bell Square. <laughs> FME, <laughs> FM cloud pad. I'm cranking the reverb up to cover up some of that nastiness that I don't like in that sound. I mean, it's intentional. They they definitely have done that on purpose. But you can crank the tone down and get less of that. It's kind of a nice sound. For sure, a little LFO stuff going on. <coughs> FM bow RM pad. I assume that's ring modulation. Yeah, that's nice. What if it moves too slowly for you though? EG down. <laughs> Not all the way. Okay, Itopia. Mystic Pad. That's a very Yamaha digital sound, isn't it? It's cool. Nowhere. Brings back uh, memories of a certain bright blue colored Yamaha keyboard, if you remember that one. FM Choir. Hmm. I. Uh, all right. <laughs> I mean. Of all the sounds you'd want to keep from the FM world, that one is not my favorite. Light strings. Now we get into some good stuff. Oh, now see, that's that's just a perfect little pad that you can adjust. Filter down. Reverb up. Chorus on. It's just like an instant warm pad. Digital, but it's it's nice. Oh, I like that one a lot. A lot. Okay, what's next? Mm -hmm. That was light strings. Now we've got JP strings, which is you know rolling JP Jupiter. <laughs> And again, that sounds kind of brash and like, ugh, in your face, a little, a little bright for me. No problem, take your filter. Crank it down. Turn your reverb up. It doesn't need any chorus, it's already got that kind of built in. Do some fun stuff with that. Put some uh, distortion behind it, and that, that'd be that'd be kind of fun. All right. Um, 
FM Sin Strings. <laughs> dynamics to that one kind of nice just for fun let's filter it down it's good it's good stuff pop sin strings so there's a lot of people who are in the the worship world um sound designers who do this thing uh, with shimmer and they're using like the big sky pedal and they're using the specular tempest and they're using the mm, all sorts of different things to, to make that sparkly kind of sound but what you could do is filter this down and you got a little bit of that shimmer thing going on with a nice big pad in there Add some chorus. Keep it realistic. Great. I know just out of the gate that does not sound amazing. You know, again, let's just start with that that pop. Where'd it go? Getting too far away from where I was. Let's see. Um unison synth. No, the other way. Pop synth strings, here we go. <laughs> So I turn the EG down a little, envelope generator. I turn the um, filter down. Turn the chorus on. Adjust that. I think I'll go back to the first chorus crank your reverb way up and you've got yourself let's adjust the EG a bit a pretty decent little shimmer pad real quick real quick okay so that's 19 okay so let's go back to Oh, sorry. Synth. <clears throat> 19. Uh, 10, 10, 17, 19. Okay. Unison strings. Actually, that could do the shimmer thing too. Let's turn the filter down and see what we get. Reverb all the way up. Turn the chorus on. play with that on your own I won't uh, take up too much more time with that but just to say don't underestimate these sounds just because they don't sound exactly like you're looking for right out of the gate they're really easy to edit octave synth strings <laughs> frankly you could layer a couple of these like octave synth strings and the pop synth strings and do some stuff with octaves and chorus and uh, low pass filter and get yourself a really 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 nice set of pads so that's not bad as it is but i'm gonna just crank the filter down and see what happens
kind of getting into uh, Hillsong territory there, doing that kind of stuff. So, anyway. Plenty of stuff here. Plenty of great pads. Stuff that you wouldn't originally think, just listening to it, would be all that awesome. But, geez, I think it's, I think it's fantastic. So, we just heard Octaves and Strings. Synth Brass 1. <laughs> Chorus on. Little more reverb. Synth brass two. Turn my chorus off. Tone up. Brass three. Really dynamic sounds. Can you see what I'm doing here? Cool. Synth brass four. doesn't do a ton for these uh these synth sounds but that's okay <clears throat> ob brass one well everybody's gonna want to go but i'm not gonna finish it because that would be illegal so we'll make up our own we'll go <laughs> wonder what that's supposed to be I mean, if you're going to do that song, that sound works. OB Brass 2. OB is in Oberheim. Tone is all the way up. Let's crank the filter up. Why not? Well, look at that. We've been going the other direction. Let's go back to OB1. Tone all the way up. is on too by the way that's with no chorus turn the chorus back on because of, yeah cool 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 ob brass 2 uh filter all the way over That's just great. Really good. Okay. OB brass three. Good job, Yamaha. They don't usually do a good job with uh, synth brass, but wow. <laughs> Going to 80sville with all that reverb. Here we go. Oh, yeah. It's super good. Uh, turn down the reverb a bit because that's just crazy. FM brass. Okay, we'll turn the. <clears throat> chorus off. Okay, right, that's a little bit of a letdown after this. <laughs> FM brass. 
I mean, it has its place, but it needs chorus. Tone down, because we, yeah. Filter. Open. Doesn't do a lot. Does a little. FM Brass Ensemble. Okay, now we're talking. And that chorus just uh just just makes it just makes it sound so much better. Woo. FM synth lead one. Simpsons lead two. I mean, you can hear that noise and aliasing. You can hear it. Jeez, listen to that. Just listen to that unnecessary garbage in there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yamaha's made a great product here, but geez, why do you got to give us those noises? Classic Mini. We know what this is. Okay, it's it's not monophonic. It should be. Especially if you're trying to do the Moog thing. You can go in and change that and make it monophonic, I think. Sound A Portamento Filter Control Touch Sensitivity. Oh, Monopoly, first thing in the list. Very mogey, doesn't it? Let's turn some chorus off. So we, eh, let's leave it on. Let's turn the reverb up. And you know what? Let's give it a little grit. Well, not that much. How about a little lead grit? So we can... Maybe not that much either. Uh, let's turn the... Compressor on. some glide portamento uh, I'm not gonna mess with all that <clears throat> anyway mini lead let's go to an initial sound and go back to synth and go to how far away were we uh, not far at all apparently mini lead there it is Okay. Funky mini. Again, these are <clears throat> these sounds are in isolation, so don't expect them to sound amazing. Still, that ain't bad. Sign lead. Theremin, anybody? Squarely. Cool. Filter. Little chorus. I'm gonna make it monophonic because it should be mono. Soft square.
polyphonic. <clears throat> and you can do this. Open up that filter. Whoa! <laughs> definitely did open up, didn't it? Dirty hook. No chorus, more reverb. Let's go to filter and play with that. Yeah. <coughs> Does some interesting things. Sync saw lead. New mini. That would be the mini Moog. Fifth lead. Cool. Calliope lead. Calliope lead. I don't know. Fun mini sub bass. Filter. <coughs> Not doing much. Analog bass. Chorus. Eh, leave the chorus off. Laughing out loud bass or 101 bass, I don't know. Fun. Synth bass. Oops. <laughs> Oops. Uh, we were in the basses. Sorry. Brass. We passed brass. <clears throat> Won't take long to get there. Let's see. Unison. <sighs> DX your bass, your bass. Synth bass, here we go. That's where I was. Ooh, need some reverb. Okay. FM tear bass, or maybe tear bass, I don't know. <laughs> FMDX E bass. FM Boogie Bass. FM Super Bass. Unison bass. <laughs> FM Owl bass. <coughs> Time children. <clears throat> FM far away. Little chorus in it. That's kind of fun. Digi Bell. With chorus. FM Bright Comp. Whew. Whoa. Well, 
Heaven Bell. FM Tubular Bell. Oh yeah, I know that sound. FM Saw Pad, which is where we started. Others. Slow Strings. to make sure we're not yeah sounds about right okay marcato strings <laughs> yeah good job yamaha this is a sound that a lot of keyboards get really 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 wrong just bleh. Let's turn the reverb up. all the way open. Or closed. Dark sounds. Ooh. Patty sounds. Cool. Fast strings. Oops. I did it again. Tremolo strings. Ooh, nice. Let's turn reverb up. Reverb up. sounds tape strings okay so we got the melodron sound here <laughs> strawberry hill hello violin Ooh, this could be <clears throat> good or bad could be bad yeah that's good right out of the Gate. That violin is actually quite good. <laughs> a decent violin sample in a keyboard. Imagine that. Hello, Roland. <clears throat> Cello. cello Pfft, 
okay, you're not going to fool anybody into thinking you're playing a cello, but ooh, that's amazing. Really good. Really, really good. Classical guitar. No, classic guitar, excuse me. Okay, I could butcher this pretty badly, so pray for me. <laughs> change the touch to hard. Why? Because I think this needs a lighter touch. Okay, nope. Not gonna fool anybody into thinking that's a real guitar, but you might make a pretty decent Christmas album with it. <laughs> pitch bin thing oh, no. it's hard to do flamenco deal, you know. <laughs> Stupid good to be in a keyboard. Stupid good. Steel guitar. <clears throat> Let's see, is this going to be better? Worse? About the same? silly but I got lost in that sound I mean come on <laughs> that's good it's so good it's so good I'm not a guitar player but I know what a terrible guitar sounds like coming through a keyboard and uh, <coughs> that ain't it 12 string guitar <laughs> yeah, that's good. 
FM jazz guitar. Oh, it's FM, so it's, you know, kind of terrible. Turn on the chorus, why not? Still a fun sound. Clean guitar one. Yep, not gonna butcher that anymore. Clean guitar two. Uh, let's play something that makes sense. New, clean guitar three. Banjo, oh boy. <laughs> I'm not even gonna... Nope, nope, nope. Sitar. Whew, shamizen. <laughs> Turn the chorus off. Oops. Koto. These are like general MIDI kind of sounds. Brass one. Okay, these are brass, like <clears throat> orchestral brass, real brass. So much weverb. Brass two. Whoa. Got some breath sounds in there. Breath sounds. happens if we do this nothing man eh, disappointing brass three some stuff in there uh Fort Sando maybe brass Eh, okay, trombone. Not terrible. Horn one. Horn two. Oh. Let's go back to horn one. Nah, horn two. Good. Sax section one. Why? Why? Okay. <clears throat> That's decent. Sax section two. Fun. Soprano sax. Alto sax. Tenor sax. I mean, as these things go, these aren't bad. T uh, what's this say? Baritone sax. <laughs> Okay, 
not bad, not bad. Jazz flute. Okay. Got the sh sh sh. So if you need to do those 80s covers, you got that covered. Alto flute. Well, that's not something you usually see. Nice. Tape flute. Okay. Harmonica. Ugh, I'm even not even going to try that. <laughs> Keyboard FM harmonic. I get I get more of that thing going on than that other one. Anyway, pan flute. Yeah, that works. Bagpipe. Oh gosh. <laughs> I'm gonna add some chorus and see how I make this better. Let's open the walls of the castle. Okay, I just I just uh, attempted an absolutely horrible accent, but <laughs> it's quite late, so I let's open the walls of the castle. Here we go. Nope, that's just as bad as my version of that accent. So, <clears throat> Shakahachi. That's actually terrible sounding. I don't even know why they bothered. Nope, terrible, upright bass, here we go. That's quite good. Chorus. Chorus widens the stereo field and does some, some cool stuff. Makes almost any sound better. Finger bass. I'm not a bass player, so don't be too hard on me. Pick bass. Fretless bass. Slap bass. Glocken. Oops. Chorus magic sound is bad. Seriously, no chorus? Chorus? Jazz vibes. Chorus. Chorus makes everything better. Marimba. sound bad. Kalimba. Chorus. Sorry, these samples suck. Um, sorry, Yamaha, that kalimba sample. Listen. Terrible. Accordion. 
Oh, I'm scared. Needs lots of chorus. Now, I don't know how to play the accordion, but... I can tell you the chorus helps. Chorus on. You can hear the reeds in that one. Very nice. Guess what? That's all the sounds. But I'm not going to leave you with that. <clears throat> because what good is it to have all these individual sounds if you don't know how to mix them? And I'll, I'll leave you to figure out how to mix them, but <clears throat> I will give you an example before we go of what it sounds like when I mixed these sounds. So individually, I got three different sounds going on. I got my Hammond, which sounds like this. <laughs> That's on my expression pedal. I've got my uh, analog pad, which sounds like this. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Let's turn off the Hammond. Uh, analog pad sounds like this. everything sound better so let's add some delay reverb lo-fi chorus here it is da, da, da. Da, da. <laughs> my pad is on this uh, modulation stick and then I have a beautiful U1 upright right here these individual sounds but turn the Leslie up uh, I mean crank the Leslie up and I've got my organ applied to the expression pedal you hear that let's bring out some higher draw bars Leslie to fast and back down to slow out a little bit. Change my draw bars. I've got the first first two in. Uh, third one's got about three out. Fourth one's all the way out, fifth one's about halfway out. Everything else is up all the way. Bring the synth in a little more. So anyway, that gives you an example of what it's like when you mix these sounds. I'll give you a couple more. Piano and FM organ pad. So by themselves, C7 piano. I'm going to go back to uh, regular touch. 
touch or normal touch. synth, pull the organ back. Where's my synth? Oh, right, it's not being triggered. Analog pad, organ. Worley B3 and pad. So... itself. Really nice. Really nice. I like it. Bring the organ in. Bring the Wurlitzer in. sound might not be to your liking and that's fine I don't care here's a similar one this is a Rhodes 78 Rhodes with the fat saw on the modulation wheel uh, stick <clears throat> shows you an example of what you can do to combine several sounds together. So I hope this has been super helpful. I know it's been a long video, but I wanted to highlight each individual section and there's more stuff that you can discover on your own. You can discover, for example, how do I apply sounds to certain controllers? Like how do I do an organ just on the expression pedal? How do I do synth just on the uh, little synth stick? I mean, synth stick, modulation, <laughs> stick. Sorry, I'm tired. Um, how do I do all that? Buttons. Push buttons. Okay? Push buttons. Make mistakes. Make messes. Make backups and fix them later. But um, controllers. Go to settings. Controllers. And explore what the controllers can do because they're really, really, really simply laid out. Like you can adjust volume for each section. You can adjust, you know, just various things cut off for each section whatever you want you can you can assign just about anything to anything so if it's a if it's a cc controller it can be assigned um that also brings up another thing that i forgot to mention this is a four zone midi controller so you can do the the four zone midi controller thing and that'll give you uh 
way more extra control. It's also a full-blown audio and MIDI interface, two-way audio and MIDI interface in both of these. So you are in good shape as far as being able to bring other sounds into it. And I think you'll find um, it's really, really easy to do. So have lots of fun with your YC 88, 73, or 61. And uh, if you got questions, throw them in the chat, a chat, a comment section, whatever. Uh, you can also email me at godisopen at gmail.com. I'll do my best to answer them. Um, but if you send me like a million messages asking me what keyboard you should buy and we talk for months and months and months and you just never make any decision and you just constantly badger me about what I should get, don't expect me to get back to you. I have a life. I have a job, several of them in fact. I have a family. Um, I don't have time to hold your hand as you try out a thousand different options. Try out your thousand different options and pick the one that works best for you. This is what works best for me at this particular time. So i um, happy to provide all sorts of recommendations and happy to help you in any way I can. But, um, you know, there's there's been a couple people that have literally just spent months back and forth asking every day a new question about a new keyboard and I'm sorry, I don't have time for that. <laughs> so that's part of the joy of exploring these things and, and learning them for yourself is um, figuring it out. Buy a Korg, buy a Yamaha, buy a Moog, buy a Hammond, buy a, a Nord. Do, do what you want to. Buy what you want, figure out what works for you, and um, I'm happy to make recommendations because I've pretty much bought most of these things. But the YC88, fantastic keyboard, recommend it. Very, very good. Very, very, very few sounds in here that suck. There's like five. That's kind of amazing. There's like five sounds in here that the samples are just god-awful. But that's so impressive. I mean, seriously, there aren't that many sounds in this thing. The ones that are here are curated, very specific. I wish you could edit them, make them go away, you know, do the Nord thing where you can dump sounds if you want to, but... What is here is fantastic. I think you're going to really, really appreciate it. I think it's going to serve you well. This is a seriously good buy, and I really recommend it. Thanks for watching. I know it's been a long one. Hope you have a great day or night wherever you are, and uh, we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.